Hi guys, welcome to my fitness vlog. So uh, it's Tuesday, but I wanted to do this before I quickly jump in the shower. I haven't done my run, as you can probably tell, because we were out last night. I'll say we were out, basically. We got, <laughs> we got back normal time, and then I decided I wanted to watch The Godfather, because I bought myself Godfather in 4K last week, and I really wanted to watch it. So we sat down and watched it, because we were like, oh, we've got plenty of time soon as Buzz went to bed really early because he was knackered and then I don't think we actually got to bed till 11.30 so I was very tired also I have incredibly like neglected my water intake um the last couple of days so I woke up feeling very dehydrated so I know when I feel dehydrated that runs are painful uncomfortable and I just hate doing it and there's no point so I didn't do it I mean, it's good because it's meant I've just been able to get stuff done this morning. Um, so I've had my breakfast, had my cup of tea, brushed my teeth. I'm literally just about to jump in the shower while um, my husband is dropping bubs off. And then I'm able to just get on with editing uh, and just getting stuff done. So, um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, little update in regards to how the operation thing, like, ball is rolling. So basically... I think I said, I think I must have said that on on Friday I had a phone call, I had a missed call from someone from in Belfast and it was basically like an NHS appointment department thing and they said they would ring me back on Monday. So me thinking that because Monday was bank holiday there would be no, <clears throat> I wouldn't get the call off or maybe it was just them making a mistake and because it's bank holiday they wouldn't be working. Turns out I was wrong. So we were in the um, lunch hall in the Tower of London, because that's what we did yesterday. It's also another reason I didn't run today, because my heels, my like Achilles tendons are very tender today, because they were very tender yesterday from doing a lot of walking. So yeah, that was another reason I didn't run. Anyway, yes, so we we're in the lunch hall at the Tower of London. Phone started ringing, and because I'd saved the number from last time, it flashed up, and obviously my husband saw it and like told me, like, quickly answer. So I answered it. It was very difficult <laughs> to actually understand what the woman was saying because she had a very thick Irish accent and it was very loud and I also had bubs right next to me going, Mum, who's that on the phone? Mummy, 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 who's on the phone? Mummy. So, yeah, I really struggled to understand anything that she was talking about. The main thing I got was that she was ringing because where I'm on the urgent list for um, seeing an orthopaedic surgeon and I had to wait more than three months... Um, what the NHS have been doing to try and clear the backlog of patients is actually put patients out or try and send patients to private clinics and actually pay for their appointments to see private surgeons um, just to help clear the backlog a bit. Basically, that's what I got from her. And she was like, oh, is this OK? So I was like, yeah, that's fine. Um, I don't know if it means that I have to pay for it. My husband's saying that it's um, that he read into it and it's actually the NHS that pays for it not me so either way I don't mind because it's just an, it's just an appointment and I hope that it wouldn't cost that much but anyway yeah so she then asked about a there's a like she gave basically the location of um another a, like basically a local-ish uh private health clinic that where they could try and get me an appointment so I said yes try and get me an appointment there so then she said, right, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass your referral on to them because obviously where the backlog is too much. So we're going to try and get to see if uh, their orthopaedic surgeon can see you um, before, like within the three month window. So she said, so you might get a, a phone call from someone else saying that you can get an appointment there. But she said, but if you don't hear hear anything in the next three months, then you know you're still on the waiting list with the NHS. So basically that's where it stands in terms of obviously I had the 10 weeks or I, I was given the 10 week sort of deadline by on Friday. But because it's such a long wait time, um, they've passed my name on to the private clinic. So just in case they can see me earlier than that 10 week deadline. So that's currently how things stand. So I'm now waiting for a call from a private clinic if I don't hear from the private clinic then I've just got to wait for the NHS to be able to see me so that's currently how things stand obviously it's quite good it's quite nice the fact that they've done that and the fact they've put me on the urgent urgent list so yeah it's just a matter of seeing what happens so on that note yeah I'm gonna go jump in the shower <laughs> but I'm hoping like because uh I've been yeah very 
very naughty this weekend in terms of just eating what I eating what I want and not drinking enough and stuff. So I'm hoping that this week I can get back into it. Obviously, I did get back into it this morning with my run, but that's a different story. So I'm hoping, yeah, that I will just be be good for the rest of the week so I can try and get back on track with my weight loss. So let's just see how that goes anyway, shall we? So, yeah, hopefully I shall see you Thursday after a run. So see you then. Hi, guys. So it's Thursday. As you can tell, I'm not on my run again. Basically, the last few days I've been having like really bad stomach like yesterday pretty much all morning i was just doubled up in pain uh with my stomach so quickly run into the toilet every like couple of minutes and stuff and yeah it just it wasn't fun at all so i didn't really want to risk it this morning like i felt fine like i had i had lunch and i had dinner yesterday and i had a few gurgles but nothing major but this morning i woke up and i had really bad cramps went to the toilet and it seemed to be fine. I've had my breakfast and literally yesterday, as soon as I had breakfast, that's when the crippling pain started. Um, that hasn't happened this morning, so I'm hoping I'm over it. But the fact, yeah, I had crippling, or well, not crippling pain, I had cramps when I woke up this morning. I was kind of like, yeah, probably best that I don't go on my run. So I'm hoping it will be fine for tomorrow because I'm hoping to take Bubs into London tomorrow to go to the Natural History Museum. So I'm hoping it's okay for then. But, uh, but yeah, I thought just for... This week, I'm going to just take it easy and not not do running. But then tonight, I've got pole and I should be fine for pole. So, um, like I said, I'll just see how I am after dinner and just go from there. So, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys in on the update. I've not heard anything from the hospital. I've not heard anything from anyone. So, but like I said, I'll keep you guys updated with anything that does happen, any updates I hear. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it stands. Um, I have been good, obviously, because I've not been out on my run. I haven't been snacking. I've just been eating normally. But I think because my stomach has felt so dodgy, I've not been tempted with snacks. So that probably is the reason why. But anyway, let's see how we get on uh, for the rest of the week. So I'll see if I can get some clips um, tonight of my poll, how my poll goes. Um, hopefully it will be a slight improvement on last week. Um, and I might try and get some footage for tomorrow, considering, yeah, it will technically count as exercise because I'm pretty sure we'll do more than 10,000 steps. But we'll see. we'll see what happens. But anyway, yes, hopefully I will see you before the weigh-in on Saturday. Because obviously this video is going to be very short. <laughs> but I'll see you then. guys so it's actually monday because i suck this week uh don't even ask it's been atrocious in terms of yeah just having a chance to be able to record anything especially because uh bubs had croup friday night which meant we had a really bad night saturday like friday saturday into saturday um and because he was so ill he didn't go rugby so um yeah i didn't have my usual time that i normally do to be able to do um like this video so hence i'm doing it now because they're off to nursery anyway so i was relieved that i lost a pound <laughs> last week or this saturday i should say um would like to have lost more because i gained or oh, no did i i can't remember but because where i gained the week before it was kind of like i would like to have lost what i gained and then some that's just the way of things considering that that like last week I didn't do any of my exercises like I didn't go running at all I didn't do any of like my stretches or my weights that I normally do because I was just like busy doing other things so um yeah considering I lost a pound and also we went out uh Friday um into London me and Bubs and I had a lot of like pasta with chicken for brunch because uh, I didn't have any breakfast I had a cake and a and a vanilla latte thing while we're out and also but then I had a Caesar salad in Vapiano instead of pizza but then I did have a bit of Bob's pizza and then I had a really big ice cream and I didn't do uh, any like I didn't 
my water intake last week was absolutely atrocious, especially on the Friday. On Friday, I was literally dying of thirst because I didn't want to have to lug around my bottle all around London and want to be weeing all the time. I didn't take it, but that was a big mistake because I was literally gasping for a drink every like everywhere we went and I was looking at like bottles tiny little bottles of water for like £2.50 and I was just like it's, I, I just can't justify paying that much for a bloody bottle of water so yeah so that went great but anyway like I said so considering I did all that and I still lost a pound so that's that's not bad I do feel like this week my sugar in my sugar uh sort of cravings don't feel as bad in terms of like normally about this time every day I'm um, I'm kind of like I really need chocolate or I really need a cake or I really need a biscuit or something but I feel fine like I'm hungry so I need to go and do my lunch um also because I've been swimming with bubs as well so I do need to have my lunch but yeah I don't feel like yeah I don't really have those sugar cravings so hopefully this coming week will be better in terms of me one getting out because I, I really want to get back into running because I didn't do my run yesterday but i'll need to save that for next week but anyway i want to get back into it this week but we're talking about last week um poll was very good apart from the fact i've done something to my hand i don't know what it is i think because my grip is just really rubbish so i'm trying like i was trying really hard to really grip oh that was it because we were trying to do one-handed spins and for some reason i just can't do them so i was trying to grip really hard and i think because of that i pulled like muscles in my fingers <laughs> trying to do it but yeah, pole, pole was a bit better than it was the last, the week before, but I'm still not coming away feeling like really achy like I normally am. So it's not, I don't know if it's, I'm just not doing as much as what I normally do. I don't know. Or could it be that my muscles are just getting used to it? I'm not sure. Um, I have a feeling it's because we're not normally doing the sort of stuff we're doing because we've had two different teachers the last couple of weeks because my pole teacher's away. So maybe when she's back, the the pain will come back. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, yes, so that's that. Also, I do actually have a very depressing update about the whole operation thing. So yeah, basically, uh, I had a phone call. I think it was Thursday. I had a phone call on Thursday from our local surgeries in my local doctor's surgery from the receptionist. And she called to tell me, like, I'll try and remember how she told me. She was like, I'm really, really sorry but they have refused your funding for your surgery. And she said, because because it's nothing to do with your back or a hernia, it's something called diastasis recti. And I was kind of like, well, yeah, I knew it was diastasis recti. That's what I told the physician before. So I don't understand like why all of a sudden they're like oh well it's not this but I, I do think that when I was speaking to the physician he was kind of like oh you must have a hernia sort of thing um because I was in a lot of like pain with my back and stuff so yeah she was like yeah it's it's, it's something called diastasis recti so the neck and the back pain that you have is just neck and back pain therefore they can't uh justify the funding she said I'm really really sorry about this um so if you want to sort out an appointment on the phone so to go over it with the physician, then feel free to do that. And I said, yes, I would like to have a word with him just to clarify just in terms of what is going on and why I've not got funding. Because diastasis recti, like I said, is <laughs> I'm just really sort of like, it just, to me, like people are going to be like, oh, she's going on about like feminism again. It just shows how patriarchal the NHS is because they clearly don't get the issue with diastasis recti because they see it, like I said, as purely a cosmetic thing. Like, I get the fact that I am very anxious about the fact that my stomach sticks out and that I do look pregnant, but that's the least of my worries. More about the fact that it just cripples me each day with, like, constant back pain. I can't do half the things I want to do, like pole I, I can't get anywhere in pole because I don't have a core to be able to do any of the exercises I want to do I can't lift um very heavy things without doing my back in I can't stand for very long without doing my back in I can't sleep properly because my back hurts I do have constant problem like stomach aches and like different things like that so that it's like it's a constant thing but they just see it as oh it's just these women they just can't they just can't get over the fact that their their bodies have changed now they become mums that's how it's seen in the NHS and it pisses me off no end. I love the NHS in terms of like, we're incredibly lucky to have it in this country, but they just don't 
get women's health they really don't it's such a like severely stupidly neglected part of the nhs and so many women have been neglected or just been fucked over because of just their sheer arrogance when it comes to women's health and um like i said i i had this run before with my physiotherapist because she like she is a women's health physiotherapist and she sees the amount of women that just get overlooked because the NHS do not understand women's health. And it's it's a fucking joke, to be honest. It really is. So that's currently how it looks like. It looks like I'm probably going to have a run at the physician on... And I don't mean to because he's a really lovely guy and he probably doesn't understand, like, the whole thing about it. But, yeah, it's just... It pisses me off, the fact that I'm now going to have to, share, like, try and fork out £10,000 to pay for something that's not my fault and it's not something that like I can't live with this back pain like it is it, like it's not livable I've li I've like dealt with it I've like lived with it for the last four years but I can't keep going like this like I'm not even 40 and yet I've got a spine of like a 90 year old sort of thing so I try not to get upset about it but it just really pisses me off <laughs> So yeah, so one, I've got to try and find £10,000 like out of thin air to try and fork out for the surgery because it's got I've got to go private, basically. So so yeah, it's just really frustrating. And it's annoying as well because I know there are women out there that have been lucky enough that they have been able to get it on the NHS because obviously their, their doctors uh, understand and they get it and they are able to get it through the NHS but obviously I'm just in one of those shitty areas that doesn't so yeah I'm not in a good, <laughs> I'm not in a good place right now in terms of just accepting the fact that I'm gonna have to pay out a lot of money for something that I shouldn't have to when it's not cosmetic surgery but I'm gonna have to get a cosmetic surgeon to do it because regular surgeons refuse to help me so but anyway, I'll uh, I'll let you know how the meeting goes on Tuesday with with the physician. Like I said, it's not looking good. It's most likely going to be the fact that I'm just going to have to fork out ten thousand pounds by myself. But yeah, I'll keep you updated because then obviously I'm going to have to have the journey of then having a consultation with a private surgeon and then seeing how much one how much is going to cost me, and two when they can fit me in and stuff. Because obviously then I've got to let my my mum know because my mum's going to have to come over to help out around the house and stuff and with bubs and things so but anyway we'll cross that bridge when we come to it next week so yeah you'll find out more about it next week i'm assuming so anyway hope you enjoyed this video i am sorry it's really short like i said because i've not really been doing much been all over the place this week so hopefully back to it next week so yeah you probably did like this video but if you did please leave a like um subscribe if you haven't already you can uh, follow me on social media as well all the links are down below and on that note, I'll say love you guys and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye.